Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about domain and range. Uh, you guys have probably heard of the terms domain and range before, hopefully you have. Uh, but specifically we're going to be targeting how do, we, how do we find the domain and range from graphs. So if they give you graphs, uh, some of them go, uh, you know, uh, go up, down, uh, left, right, have arrows at the end. So how do we find the domain and range for different graphs that they present us? And then how do we know if uh, those graphs are actually functions or not? So we're going to try to tackle those. Um, and then we'll talk about the function stuff at the end. Uh, it was part of another video, but I can just go over that again real quick. So domain and range from graphs. So to find the domain and range, first of all, domain, you need to know that domain is the input, right? So domain in, 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 input, which is the x. So the interval where the graph exists on the x-axis. So whenever you're looking at the domain, you're looking at just the x-axis. The range is the interval where the graph exists as on the output um, y-axis. So the input is the x, output is the y. So all we're doing here is basically trying to figure out where does this graph exist on the x-axis? Where does this graph exist on the y-axis? Meaning, where does this the beginning and where, does, where is the end of the graph on the x-axis, the domain? What is the beginning and what is the end of the graph on the y-axis, which is the range? So we'll do some examples, uh, we'll work through them, and then hopefully this will be enough examples to be able to um, guide you so you can finish your assignment for, for this particular uh, topic. So let's do an example together. So what is the domain and range of example number one? Uh, if you remember when we talked about uh, inclusion or, or including and excluding, closed circle means we're including those numbers, right? So what this is saying is that we're including the numbers that are here on the left-hand side, bottom left, and then we're including that number here that is on the top right. So this point is included, this, this point is included. How do we write the domain? Well, domain is from left to right. So this graph has a starting point here at negative 2, and then it ends here at positive 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to highlight this for you so you can see exactly what the difference between the domain and range is. So the domain is strictly talking about the x-axis, right? Where does this start? Where does it end? Well, this starts here at negative 2. There's a closed circle, so I'm going to have a bracket. And it ends here at positive 2. And that's going to be closed circle again, so I'm going to have 2 and a bracket. Okay? So I'm looking only on the x-axis to find the domain. I'm going to do the exact same thing now, but we're going to be finding the range which is basically the same idea, but we're looking at the y-axis. Where does this graph begin and end on the y-axis? What is the bottom of the graph? What is the top of the graph on the y? So the range, the bottom of this graph would be here at negative 3. There's a closed circle, so I'm going to have a bracket. And the top of this graph would be here on the y-axis at 2. So from negative 3 is the bottom of the graph to positive 2 is the top of the graph. So negative 3, 2 would be the range. Okay? So hopefully that becomes a little more clear. So domain is from left to right on the axis. The range is from the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph. All right, now they can give you the domain and range in terms of interval notation like I just did, or they can give it to you as an inequality. If they give it to you as an inequality, uh, closed circle means you're going to have a little line under the inequality. So for example, this, this will be negative 2 and less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. For the range, same idea. This will be negative 3 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so the range is the y, so that's why the y goes in the middle. Uh, let's do one another example, example number 2. The more examples we have on this, the better it is and the easier it'll become. So example number 2, we have to find the domain and range of this graph. Again, I'm going to highlight the x-axis for the domain. So that would be the input, right? So that's the domain. The range is the output or the y-axis, so we're trying to find the range, which means we're only looking at these values right here on the y-axis. So let's try to find the domain. So from left to right, right, so on the x-axis. So this graph starts here at the negative 2. We have a closed circle, that means we're going to have a bracket. And this graph ends, uh, the right side of it would be here at the positive 3. So the domain would be from negative 2 to positive 3. Notice that there is an open circle at the positive 3, so we're going to have a parenthesis. Parenthesis means we're not including that number. Okay, so open circle means we're not including the number, so we're going to have correspondingly a parenthesis. Range is from the bottom to the top of the graph. 
So the bottom of this graph would be from here, which is negative 2. We have a closed circle at the negative 2, so bracket. And then it's going to end at the top of the graph, which happens to be here at 3. Now at 3, we have an open circle, so we're going to have parentheses. So the range would be uh, negative 2 to positive 3. Now let's say you want to write that as an inequality. This is going to be negative 2. We're going to have a little line under it because we have a bracket. X, no line under it because we have parentheses, and then the 3. Same thing with the range. We start at the negative 2. A little line under it because we have a bracket. This is going to be a Y because it's the Y axis for the range. Uh, then it's going to be less than 3. No line under it because we have parentheses. Okay. Uh, example number 3. Same idea. Let's find the domain and range of this graph. Notice that this guy, this guy actually has arrows, so that's very important. Arrows mean, uh, when you have an arrow in the, at the end of a graph, it means that it goes on forever and ever and ever. It never really ends. So we have to basically consider that for our domain and range. So where does this graph start? What is the domain of this graph from left to right? So again, let's start by highlighting uh, the values of x. So that's my domain, right? Let's highlight the values of y. That is my range. So I'm looking only on the y-axis. Now this one's a little tricky. So this goes forever and ever and ever to the left. So is it going to start at negative 4? No, not really. I know you guys want to maybe say that it starts at negative 4, but this arrow tells me that it goes on forever and ever and ever to the left. So this, this graph actually exists from negative infinity, right, forever to the left, and it also exists forever to the right, which is positive infinity. Infinity will always have a parenthesis, so the domain will be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The arrows means it goes forever and ever to the left, forever and ever to the right. Okay. The range will be from the, from the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph. The bottom of the graph, well, there is a bottom, right? If you look at the y-axis, that is 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the bottom of the graph on the y-axis would be starting at 0. And the top of the graph, well, again, arrows means that it never really ends. So it keeps on going, 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 bigger and bigger and bigger. So it actually never ends. I'm going to put an infinity saying that it never ends. It goes forever and ever and ever upwards. Um, so there we go. So... Basically, for the domain of the x values, it's all real numbers. So basically, if we we're trying to write that as an inequality, we really can because everything's going to work, right? So everything's going to work, so all real numbers is fine. Uh, if we're trying to figure out an inequality for the range, well, as long as you have y bigger than or equal to zero, then it's going to work, right? So the y-axis, we have no negative numbers, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, this is where it starts. So as long as the y is bigger than zero, then that's going to be your range. So I just write it as y is greater than or equal to zero. Um, okay, a few more examples, and then we are done with this. Let's try to do this one real quick. What is the domain and range of this graph? So in interval notation, the domain is from left to right. So from left to right, this thing starts at negative infinity. Well, that looks pretty ugly. And then it goes all the way up to this x-axis, which is 1. Now I'm going to go a little faster. Uh, hopefully you don't need me to do the highlighting this time. So from negative infinity, forever and over to the left, all the way to positive 1. Now, a positive 1, I have a circle, open circle, so I'm going to put a parentheses. Uh, negative infinity will always be a parentheses, or any infinity will be parentheses. So there we go. There's my domain. The range is from the bottom to the top of the graph, right? So the, from the bottom to the top of the graph, the bottom of this graph would be at negative infinity because it never ends. The top of the graph would actually be at 3. And then notice that at the 3 we have an open circle, so we're going to put a parentheses. How do we write that as an inequality? Well, it goes to negative infinity, and then it stops at the 1. So basically all the values that are less than 1 would work. So we're going, to, we're going to write x is less than 1. Notice that I don't put the little line under it because um, it's not including the 1. Uh, if we want to write this as an inequality, negative infinity all the way to 3, uh, that would actually be all the negative values of y and then stopping at the 3. So I'm going to write it as y is less than 3. So either way you want to write the domain and range uh, would work. Um, some people prefer one interval notation, which is the top one, over 
um, inequality, which is the bottom one. But either way, you're saying the same thing. So the range would be all the values that are less than 3. Sample 5, domain of range. So the left side of the graph, well, this thing goes forever and ever to the left, so it's going to be negative infinity. The right side of the graph, uh, this thing goes forever and ever to the right, so positive infinity. Uh, the bottom of the graph, so the range, uh, that goes to the bottom forever, so negative infinity. The top of the graph, that goes forever and ever up, so that's positive infinity. So negative infinity, positive infinity for both domain and range, because this thing keeps on increasing bottom, up, left, and right. Okay, if I want to write that as an inequality, well, basically everything works for x, right? So x equals all real numbers. If I want to do the same thing for the y, y equals all real numbers. I forgot the u, but... You get the idea. Um, example number six, domain and range, same thing. So domain is from left to right. So we're starting at the negative three. There's a closed circle, so bracket. It never ends to the right. So we're gonna have a infinity symbol because it never ends, parentheses for infinity every single time. Range is from the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph. So this graph, the bottom is going to be a negative two. We have a closed circle, so bracket. And then it goes up forever and ever and ever upwards and never uh, ends going up or stops going up. So that's going to be infinity going up. So there we go. There's my domain and range for this graph. Uh, if I want to write this as an interval, or sorry, as an inequality, uh, this is going to be from negative 3 all the way to infinity. So all the values of x that are bigger than or equal to negative 3. So we're going to say x is bigger than or equal to negative 3. Uh, these are all the values of y that are bigger than or equal to negative 2. So we're going to say y is bigger than or equal to negative 2. Okay. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, ask any more. If you have any questions in class, let me know.